Well, hello and welcome to this special service in honor of Jim Bishop. If I haven't had the chance of meeting you, my name is Doug Robinson, and I'm the minister at Sugar Grove Church of Christ, which was Jim's church. And I just want to take some time here at the start to say thank you for watching this service. I know that means a lot to Jim's family. And we've gathered together online. You're watching this video to remember Jim's life, to cherish the joyous memories you have with him, to mourn his loss, but to ultimately celebrate who Jim is in Christ, because that's what Jim would want us to remember the most, Jesus. So to start the service, we have a couple of songs, and then that will be followed up with some videos from two of Jim's friends, Carolyn Rogan and Joe McQueen. This is sufficient for me. Your strength is made perfect when I am weak. And all that I cling to, I lay at your feet. Your grace is sufficient for me. Grace is sufficient for me. Your strength is made perfect when I am weak. And all that I cling to, I lay at your feet. Your grace is sufficient for me. Your grace is sufficient for me. Your strength is made perfect when I am weak. And all that I cling to, I lay at your feet. Your grace is sufficient. Your grace is sufficient, your grace is sufficient for me to see the Lord, the promised land, where in a sense the pearly gates look bland. And what was once a pearl? That blows away, that blows away in light of Him. Your grace is sufficient for me. Your strength is made perfect when I am weak. And all that my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand, in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness. Scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every 
sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay. Light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day. From the grave he rose again, and as he stands for victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of christ i stand hello i'm carolyn rogan coming to you from houston when my kids and I placed membership at Sharpstown Church of Christ in 1972, one of the first activities I busied myself with was the visitation ministry, which is where I met Jim and Marion and got to know them. Over the years, we played a lot of Duplicate Bridge together. In case you're not familiar with Duplicate Bridge, that is serious bridge. They were excellent players. When their son Mark died, a small group of us drove to Austin for the funeral service. I still remember how loved Mark and his family were in that church community. Jim allowed me to help with the choice of nursing homes when Marion was released from the hospital, and we grew closer during my visits there. After her death, we usually formed a threesome with David Jackson when our preacher, Doug, forced us into small group conversations during his sermons at Sugar Grove Church. Jim and I had some good talks when I drove him to church, the Burtons, and various shopping trips. He was a man of few words, very soft-spoken, but he was worth listening to. He loved to read his Bible and study scripture and discuss it. He was also very methodical, and everything would be in its place if he had his way. Unofficially, he was in my small group at Sugar Grove, but when we would invite him to lunch on a day when he had a FaceTime visit scheduled with his grandkids, he usually said no. That was of the utmost importance to him, and he so looked forward to those visits. Although we never expressed it in words, I think we were true friends. I really miss him. Hi, I'm Joe McQueen. Um, I came to Texas in 1979, in fact, January of 1979. I moved to Missouri City, and the first Sunday here, I went to the Sharpstown Congregation. And there, my family met uh, a lot of young families, and uh, Jim and Marion Bishop were there, and uh, that's where we first met. And uh, we were involved with uh, with everything that went on there: the the worship, uh, Bible study, uh, covered dish dinners, uh, holiday parties, retreats. But uh, Jim and Marion were all all part of that, and uh, I can still remember the first time I went into the lobby of the the hospital on the Southwest Freeway there, and uh, I was heading to see the doctor, and there was Marion in her 
red outfit. She was a volunteer and saw her there many times when I went to visit, but uh, you know, she was an active part of the volunteer force there at uh, Southwest Memorial. And uh, the bishops and ourselves all came together when Sharpstown went with uh, Eldridge Road and formed Sugar Grove. And uh, they were part of the founding families here and was here when the uh, ground was broken and the foundation was laid and de dedicated. And uh, of course the family here gathered around Jim and, and Mary when they lost their only son Mark in 2007 and they were devastated and, and of course uh, Jim and Mary were there for me when I lost my wife in 2011. And uh, we all were there for Jim when Mary went home in 2015. But uh, in 2017, I retired, and every Friday, Jim and I got together with some other guys that retired, and we had lunch. And guys don't open up to one another very easily, but over a period of time, I got to know Jim, and and just uh, I found out that uh, you know when he grew up, he didn't have a mom and a dad. He uh, he grew up in an orphanage. He had sisters, but they weren't there and couldn't take care of him. So. It was him in the orphanage, but uh, somewhere along the way he found uh, his creator and Jesus. And, you know, we talked about that at lunch. We talk about a lot of things like guys do, you know, about uh, politics and religion and sports and computers and whatever. And in the last few months we've been Zooming, and Jim's been there on Friday and always Zoom. He missed one time, and we found out his computer was acting up. But uh, he got back with us, and everything was fine. And... And then that one Friday, he didn't show up, and we found out he had gone. But uh, I guess I'd just like to say in my discussions with Jim, uh, you know, uh, he knew where he was going when his life was over with because he told me that. And it wasn't because of anything he had done. It was because of, uh, because of Jesus and uh, what was done for him on the cross. And, uh, you know, Jim was my friend. He was my brother, and I and I miss him. Well, thank you so much, Carolyn and Joe, for sharing what you said. Jim Bishop was a faithful follower of Christ and was a member of Sugar Grove Church of Christ for more than 20 years. He was a scholar of the Bible and enjoyed studying. Jim had a gentle spirit about him, and he was soft-spoken. He also had a great, dry sense of humor. He worked in accounting, and he retired from the University of Houston. And Jim loved his family. He met his wife, Miriam, who is deceased while serving in the military, and they had one son, Mark, who is also deceased. Jim was a proud grandpa to two grandsons who live in Colorado, and Jim was a very social person. He worked out daily. He was a wonderful bridge player, and he played train each week with a group of his friends from church. He never missed. Jim was truly a good guy and a friend to so many. He also enjoyed getting together with his Friday lunch group, and he always enjoyed the fellowship. Jim will be missed by all those that knew him, and how could he not be? Jim volunteered, Jim participated, Jim joined in, and his passing has left a hole in all these different groups and in our church as well. I'll always remember Jim in this way, a guy who was truly a part of everything, He'd call and ask me questions about upcoming events. He'd call to get clarity about an announcement that was made at church. After sermons, he'd sometimes ask me questions about what was discussed. And before sermons, he'd have great ideas for me to go along with whatever series we were in. I remember one time we were in a series at our church called Christianese, where we took some time to really talk about words that we often use but don't necessarily know what they actually mean. Words like grace and mercy and salvation. And it was several times during this series that Jim and I would be talking before service because he was always there and he was always early. And he'd say, oh, I, I thought of another word that we could study. Now for Christianese, I was sticking to like 101 words. And I think every word Jim gave me was a 501 level or higher. I'm going to miss getting to talk to him before and after service, seeing him in the hallways on Tuesday before his weekly game of train. I know many of you are going to miss him too. When we get back together on the other side of the virus, we won't be the same church with Jim's passing. And that's sad. 
which is okay because loss is hard. Death takes from us. It causes us to mourn. It brings up questions. It makes a permanent change. And there was a church during the time of the Apostle Paul who was going through the same range of emotions we are with Jim's passing. There was hurt, there was tears, there was sadness. And Paul, he writes this church. He understands where they're coming from. He's experienced loss as well. But as he's writing them, he reminds them of an important truth, one we can and should remember today as well. This is what Paul will write. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, concerning those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, in the same way, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For we say this to you by a word from the Lord. We who are still alive at the Lord's coming will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the archangel's voice, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are still alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So we mourn and we grieve, but not without hope. You see, the Bible says that God loved the world when he sent his one and only son, Jesus. And whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And Jim believed. Jim trusted. Jim knew Jesus as his savior. So his death was not the end of his story. Jim was and is alive in Christ and will be with him again when we meet with Christ at his second coming. So do we mourn today? Absolutely. But without hope? Of course not. We encourage one another as we celebrate and remember that in Christ, death has been defeated. And Jim would want me to, I think, pause and turn the attention for a second from him to you who are watching. To say to you that if you don't know what it means to receive the love of God, or if Jim's passing has brought about questions for you, or you want to hear more about this Jesus that Jim loved and that loved Jim, I'd love to talk to you more about any of that. I know Jim's Friday lunch group would love to talk to you about that too. His train game friends, his church, we'd love to help you process any questions you may be asking and remember and celebrate the life of Jim Bishop with you as well. As we close our time together before we sing one final song, let's end our service today by reading and remembering the wonderful truth found in Romans 8, 38-39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see t'was grace that taught my heart to feel and grace my
chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine.